Hello, this is Jack. Welcome to Practical Programming Channel. In this video series, you will learn everything you need to get started with WebGPU graphics programming. The pretty pictures displayed on your screen are created using WebGPU. In this video series, I will show you how to use the WebGPU API to create these beautiful 3D graphics objects. This is the first series of the step-by-step -step WebGPU graphics programming. Here, I will show you how to set up the development environment for building WebGPU applications. What is WebGPU? WebGPU is the next generation graphics API. It is a future web standard for graphics and compute. WebGPU will provide modern 3D graphics and computation capabilities with the GPU acceleration. In this video series, we will use the following development tools to build WebGPU applications. First is the Visual Studio Code, Node.js. We will use TypeScript as our programming language. Webpack as our module bundler. And finally, we need to use Chrome Canario for displaying WebGPU applications. Since currently, WebGPU can only run on Chrome Canario, but not the regular Chrome brochures. Here, I suppose you already installed Visual Studio Code and Node.js, and also installed TypeScript globally on your machine. Now open a command promote window and uh, make a project folder called GPU001 and a CD into it. And then we are going to run this command npm init-y to create the package JSON file. This file will store our dependencies. Now we are going to install Webpack and its command line interface using this command. Uh, it will take a while to install Webpack. Webpack is a module bundler that bundles relevant files together and generates a static asset that will be used by the web brochure. Here we use Webpack mainly for transpiling a TypeScript file and creating JavaScript bundle. But here we don't use it to bundle other types of files, such as HTML and image file. Now the installation is completed. At this point, we are going to start Visual Studio Code with this command, code dot. Here is our Visual Studio Code. Uh, you can close this uh, welcome page. You can see we only have package JSON file but not much happening here. Now open a terminal window. Okay, let's install several dependencies. First, we will install jQuery and a corresponding types package. Use this command. We will use jQuery to manipulate DOM elements in our applications. Next, we will install CSS and TS loader. In case if our project contains starting sheet file, we need to use the CSS loader to bundle them. In order to create TypeScript module in our project, we also need to install TypeScript locally. Use this command. Now open the package JSON file. We can see the script section uh, only contains text attribute. That is not very useful. Here we are going to replace its uh, script section with this code. The replaced code allows you to run Webpack in different modes, for example, development, production, or watch mode. Now save this file and close it. OK, now all the installed packages are going to be stored in this node modular folder. Here you can see all the installed packages in this folder. Another file called package.log.json. 
this file is automatically generated for any NPM operations. So we don't need to do anything with it. Next step is to initialize TypeScript with this command tsc dash dash init. This operation creates a configuration file for TypeScript. Now open it and replace its content with this code. You can see here, we define the root directory as SRC, and we will restore the JavaScript output file in the DIST folder. We set the target to ES6 standard. This means we don't need the bubble compiler to convert modern JavaScript to run in older brochures. This is because web GPU application can only run on modern brochure anyway. Now, let's create a folder structure for our project. First, let's create the SRC folder. We will store our source file in this folder. Next, we create the DIST folder that will be contain all files that will be uploaded to the web server for running our application. In this folder, there is at least one HTML file. Let's add the index HTML file to this folder and replace its content with the following code. Here we add a one to the title because this is the first video series. Next, we add the title check web GPU to H1 element. We also need to add a new H2 DOM element with id equal to id gpu check. This h2 element will be used to display the string that will be returned by a TypeScript function that will be created later. Now we are about to finish the development environment setup for building web gpu applications. But we have missed a key step. That is, we need to install the web gpu package WebGPU Working Group have created a TypeScript type definition for WebGPU standard. This package matches the work-in-progress WebGPU API, which is currently unstable. This API changes almost weekly, so be careful to use it. Anyway, let's go ahead to install it with this command. Now let's check whether it is installed or not by opening the package.json file. You can see it is installed here. The current version is 0.1.2. A week later when you install it, the version may be already changed. But that is OK. Here we will use this version for our application. After the installation, we need to configure it. Open the TypeScript configuration file and add this code to it. Note that above this line, we have node type here. So we also need to install it, use this command. That's it. The web GPU is now available for our project. Now let's add some TypeScript file to our project. First, add a new file called HireProTS to the SRC folder. We will add WebGPU related HirePro code to this file. Now add a function to check whether your web brochure supports WebGPU or not. Here is the code for this function. You can see we use the navigator GPU variable to check the WebGPU's availability. This variable is defined in the WebGPU API. You can see here, we use a fat arrow to create TypeScript function. The fat arrow allows us to drop the need to use the function keyword. You can also add input argument here. In this video series, we will use a fat arrow to create TypeScript function whenever possible.
Next, we need to create an entry point file called main.ts. Add some code to it. First, we import the jQuery and then I import the check web GPU function from the help.ts file. We then use this code to display the string retained by the check web GPU methods. Make sure this ID is the same as the ID in the index file. Make sure they are consistent. Next, we also need to create the webpack configuration file to the root directory. To save time, I will paste the code content here from predefined code snippet. You can see here, we define the bundle output directory as DIST. The entry point is named main, and the source comes from the SRC directory. Note that the output file has always with dot .bound.js extension. Save this file and run the following command from terminal window. npm run product. This will create a bundle file in production mode. OK, finish. You can see the bundle file here. It is about 89 KRB, which is a very small file size. You can also check the bundle file in the DIST directory. You can see three new files are generated. This is lesson file. This is a source map file for debugging. And this JavaScript file is our bundle file, which has been referred in the index htm file. To test our application, we also need a server. Here, we will use a live server extension. Click on the extension link in Visual Studio Code and search for live server. Here it is. I already installed it on my machine. If you didn't, there was also a install button here. Please click on the install button to install it. Now open the index.html file. Right click it and select open with live server. This will open your default brochure to display the web page. Unfortunately, if your default brochure is a regular Chrome or Edge, it will display the message. Your current brochure does not support WebGPU. In order to run WebGPU application, you need to install Chrome Canary. Search for Chrome Canary from your web browser. Click on this link. It says Chrome Canary is a nightly build for developer. Click on the download Chrome Canary link and then download and install it following the instruction. Please remember the installation location. You will need this location to configure your Visual Studio code. Now, we go back to Visual Studio Code. We want to change the default brochure to Chrome Canary, which will be easy to test our web GPU application. Press F1 key and tap Preference, and then select Open Setting JSON. This will open the Setting JSON file. This is three line of code to config the live server. Here, the attribute advanced custom brochure CMD line define the default brochure for Visual Studio Code. This is the file location on my machine. You need to copy your Chrome Canary EXE file location and paste it here. You must change it to match your situation. The next line, don't show info message. It really doesn't matter. I just set it to true. The third line is a root attribute. 
I set it to DRST folder because our index.html file is located in this directory, so it will automatically start our application when starting the live server. Now save this file and close it. Okay, finally, we can test our development environment for WebGPU application. Now click on the Go Live link from the status bar. This time, it will start the Chrome Canary brochure because we define it as a default brochure. So you can see it displays message. Great, your current brochure supports WebGPU. Congratulations, we have successfully set up the development environment for WebGPU applications. I have created a GitHub repository to host the source code used in this video. I will post the link for the source code below this video. You can click the link to download the source code. I will end this video here. In next video, I will show you how to create a simple web GPU triangle and this development environment. See you next time. Bye. Thank you.